If you're currently selling less than two homes per month, this video was made just for you. I don't know if you knew this, but the statistic says that 90% of real estate agents sell less than two homes per month. Mind blowing. And I want to make sure that you're not one of them. Let's get you into the top 10%, hopefully top 1% by the end of this video. <laughs> You're watching this video because you're selling less than two homes per month. What that typically means to me, and I want to make sure we're speaking on the same level, is that most of you are probably somewhere in the realm of about one-ish home per month. All right, that means on average right now, commission checks are averaging about six to eight thousand dollars per year, which means that you're probably making somewhere between sixty and a hundred thousand dollars a year. What I want to be talking to specifically you about in this moment is what is going to shift in your business, what shifts you need to be making today in order to go from where you're at currently to you know, four, five, six, eight, ten homes per month so that you can pass over that that line, that barrier that so many agents get stuck behind, which is the one to two homes per month. So let's dive right into it. The very first talking point I want to start talking about here is hiring an assistant or getting support in some type of fashion. So what I typically recommend for an agent who's selling between eight and 24 homes per year is that you do need to hire somebody. Whether that's a VA or a full-time assistant, obviously this depends on your cash flow situation and your average commission check because listen, it's very different for someone to sell 24 homes in the middle of Alabama versus somebody in California. If you're selling 24 homes in California when your commission check is 20, 30, or $40,000, yeah, you might be doing pretty freaking well, which is awesome. Kudos for you, super excited. However, look around the country, if the average commission check is only four or 5,000 bucks and you're selling one home a month, you're somewhere between 50, 60, $70,000. It really has to depend on that type of a system. If you're making less than $10,000 per month, what I would typically recommend you do is you find an assistant a transaction coordinator specifically, someone who can work on a per transaction basis for around $300 to $1,000 per transaction. Now again, listen, every market's different. Again, if you're in the middle of Alabama, you might be able to find somebody for three to 500 bucks. If you're in California, you might be paying them seven, 800, 900, a thousand dollars per transaction. It just varies where you're at. But again, asking for support, hiring support is going to allow you to scale a lot faster than you trying to do everything on your own. Because a lot of real estate agents, biggest big mistake that I see real estate agents make in the beginning of their career when they're starting to gain traction is that they don't hire soon enough. And no, I'm not talking about another salesperson, another agent, some hotshot young guy or girl walks in the office, you're like, oh, it'd be so awesome for that person to make phone calls for me so I don't have to prospect. No, I'm talking about a support staff member, not a salesperson, okay, very different. So. First point is that you need to ask for support, hire support sooner in your business because what this will allow you to do is go from where you're at currently and it should nearly triple your business if you hire the right support. This was one of the very first hires that I made when I was growing my business years ago was I hired a specific transaction coordinator which was on a per file basis. I paid her, I think it was around $400 per transaction. I'm in the New Jersey market. Back then my average price point was around 300 to three and a quarter. So I paid around 400 bucks. Nowadays, I've you know at my transaction team, I've had people that I pay somewhere between 600 and $800 a, per transaction for. And, and I've coached people to start hiring people in that specific price range so that you can scale appropriately where your margin are still incredibly high because the whole purpose of an agent that's doing somewhere between 12 and 24 transactions, that jumping point is now taking all of the actions you do on a daily basis, all the tasks and minimizing them. So you're only spending your time doing the highest dollar productive activities and then delegating the activities that are only call it 15 or $20 an hour activities like inputting a listing, scheduling photos, managing the attorney review process, managing the transactional process, scheduling everything around inspections, appraisals, and anything else that needs to be done during the transaction, minimizing the amount of tasks on your plate so that you can delegate the things that don't make you a ton of money. This is one of the most important factors if you're going to want to scale beyond one or two transactions a month. And yes, I have had people who sell 40, 50, 60 homes all by themselves. And guess what? They work 100 to 120 hours a week and they kill themselves because they don't want to hire somebody, which I think is nonsense. And I want you to know, I'm not telling you to go out and then hire a full-time staff member right now for 40, 50, 60,000 a year. No, I'm saying you can start off with someone at a per transaction basis. And honestly, you can honestly keep that person until the numbers start to flip-flop, which means you're starting to close. Let's just do a quick example. If you're paying somebody $500 per transaction, I'm just writing this down on my nice 
big pad over here, $500 per transaction. What happens is that if you're now doing five transactions per month, that comes to $2,500 per month. So now when you're at $2,500 a month or $30,000 a year. So just realize that that, that that could be a good tipping point where now you can start looking into hiring a full-time assistant at 30, 32, 36,000 a year because that person can start doing a little bit more work for you and also you get eight hours of their time versus whatever time a per transactional basis person will do for you. So again, there's gonna be a tipping point, but again, this is typically the model that I like to coach to because why would you hire somebody for 30 to $40,000 a year when you're closing one transaction a month? I get it. This is something that I would typically not recommend. I didn't hire my first full-time employee until I was closing around four to five transactions a month at eight to $10,000 a month. I made 20 grand one month and then the next month I made 50,000 and then I never made less than $50,000 a month ever again. That's when I started to hire my full-time assistant and I started the scale. When you start hitting that $20,000 a month range, which again, depending on your commission check size, should be somewhere between four and six transactions or less. It could be even three. If you're going three transactions a month and each one of those commission checks is ten dollars to $15,000, hire a full-time assistant. You're saving pennies and stepping over dollars, right? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Quick pun, I don't know if you paid attention to it, but all right, let's dive into point number two. Point number two is that the first thing that real estate agents tend to stop doing in their career when they start to get busy, take a guess. Wow, yes, you got it right, lead generation. Most agents typically stop lead generating because they get Busy. This is a roller coaster, by the way, of most real estate agents. They're going up and they're, they're, you know, they're doing a ton of lead generation, ton of lead generation, they start closing a lot of business and then they get super busy, overwhelmed, and then they're trying to manage all the transactions and then they start falling down this line. You know, their business starts falling off the planet right now and then guess what? Then you gotta start lead genning again, lead genning again. And you see what I'm saying? You're on this roller coaster of real estate. Are you tired of being on the roller coaster of real estate? Yeah, so was I years ago. So what I learned was that I need to hire somebody, like we talked about in point number one, so that I could spend all of my time each and every single day lead generating. That's why I say ask for support, hire support. So that way you can constantly be on this crazy rise always and forever, never go down. That dip never really happens. Making sure that your calendar is built around lead generation as the absolute priority. That is the priority. And if you're a salesperson, which a lot of real estate agents like hate using the word sales or being a salesperson, hello, you have a salesperson license, your day is built based on what you do before 12 noon. Your income every single day is based off of what you do before 12 noon. If you're going to the office by 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm telling you right now, you're probably not gonna be as productive as somebody like myself who you to get to the office at 7 a.m. A lot of top real estate agents that I know where their days start at 8, 9 a.m. at the office. First three hours, all you should be doing before 12 noon, you should never take an appointment. 100% of your morning should be based and focused on lead generation. We both know life lives. And we both know that in the real estate world, there's going to even be a million things that all of a sudden happen. We're basically firefighters, putting out fires all day long, putting out these fires. What I suggest that you try to do is having a powerful morning routine where you can focus 100% of that time before 12 noon on lead generation. This is going to set yourself up for success long term. I do not go on appointments before 12 noon. My first appointment, even to this day, my calendars are blocked off till about 12, 12.30, just about every single day. And then I go on appointments at one o'clock and then anytime afterwards. This assures me that my mornings, I never, ever, ever miss my call sessions because my call sessions turn into my income. Lead generation is the mother of all the dollars, right? If lead generation fixes all problems, leads solve all problems, don't ever stop prospecting. Most agents stop prospecting. Okay, so point number three, agents typically focus on one lead generation pillar. And what happens is that the reason why you're probably stuck under that two deal a month mark is because you're focused on a lead generation pillar that is not typically going to produce the results you're truthfully looking for. Let's start breaking things down for a second. An agent focuses on open houses. In this market, you tell me, should you really be focusing on open house leads? Just take a second. Am I saying don't do any of them? No, I'm not. I'm saying should you focus on that being the main lead generation pillar right now? Probably not. But again, I've had agents who focus on open houses where they end up getting a bunch of buyer leads, which are just people who are looking around. And yes, can you get a great lead? Absolutely, you can with open houses, 100%. I'm not saying don't do them, but I'm saying that is probably not gonna be your main pillar of lead generation. I've had agents that they focus 100% of their time on expireds. It's 2022 and there probably is less expireds now than there was ever in history, but there is less expireds over the last 24 months than there's ever been in history. So focusing on expireds is probably not going to drive the results 
result you're looking for because there used to be anywhere between 20 to 100 expireds a day. Nowadays, there's only a handful every single day. And if you're competing with 20 other agents and you used to be splitting 20 to 100 leads, now you're only splitting three leads a day? I mean, good luck. If 50 agents in your marketplace, 100 agents in your marketplace are all calling expireds, your conversion rate might not be the highest. And I've had agents where they all they do is they call expireds right now. Well, it's probably not going to be the main lead generation pillar that's going to be the most successful. So I've got another one. I have agents who only focus on Facebook ads. Facebook ads in this market is probably not going to be the highest and best use of your time because you're gonna be spending a lot of money in most Facebook ads are targeting buyer leads. And in this market, that's probably not going to be the best use of your time because then guess what? What ends up happening is that number one, they're not practicing their scripts because they think that you know the lead generation on Facebook ads are just gonna do all the work for them. That's just number one. Number two is that when they get the lead, now they have to learn how to convert that lead into a type of a buyer consultation, right, to an appointment. And then they have to make sure that they get then get pre-approved. And then they have to go out and show them 78 houses before they end up winning one house because they made 17 offers on the 78 houses and they finally get a house accepted. And that could be like six, eight, 10 months of your time. So probably not going to be the highest and best use of your time. And yes, can you do seller lead Facebook ads? Of course you can. Of course. However, we both know if you're circle prospecting, doing Facebook ads, if you're doing open house leads, if you're doing just about any type of lead generation other than probably for sale by owners and expired, you're probably going to get somebody who's somewhere between 90 days to six months or 12 months out from actually buying or selling their property. So you're building a pipeline, not today's business. We get paid for typically 90 days to six months after today's work. So you're building a pipeline. That's why typically in real estate, when you get your license, it takes somewhere between 90 days and six months, sometimes a year, in my case, 11 months to get my first commission check. But then what happens is that you're slowly building a pipeline that will pay you over time. So if I start prospecting day one, what ends up happening is that hopefully by day 90 or six months in, you can start having a role of business. Business. This is how I'm able to coach agents where in their first 12 months, they make $100,000 or more in their first year because they start making money in their third month. Then by month four, five, or six, they're starting to close one or two or three transactions a month and then it just scales up from there. But that's because they focus on the correct lead generation pillars. So instead of Facebook ads or mailers or, or open houses or expireds or for sale by owners in these markets, what they do is they focus on key lead generation pillars such as the following. Number one, building a network and or your sphere of influence. Your professional partners list are people who you know, like you, trust you, and know how to refer you business and have referred you business in the past. Because what happens is that if someone has done it at least one time, can they do it again? Yes. All you have to do is continuously stay on top of them, stay in their life, treat them well, and they'll probably do them again, especially if you ask for referrals. Yes, asking for referrals. It's actually a lead generation pillar. You can actually make that replicatable, duplicatable in your business. Professional partners is number one. Number two is your sphere of influence. People in your phone book, right? I'll take out my phone for a second. If you go on your phone book, which I'll go to my contact list really, really quickly. This is all on the fly. At this moment, I have 3,973 contacts. 3,973 people that I can go through. And guess what? I'm not saying all 3,973 people are going to refer me. But I am saying is that there's probably a good amount of people in that book, in that contact book, that I can continuously reach out to over the course of a year, a few people every week. It's called the ABC rule. There's 52 weeks in a year and there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So that means you can call every letter twice throughout the year. And guess what? Most people don't have 4,000 contacts in their phone. So if you have less, can you do two letters every week? Yes, of course you can. And you touch base with them every single week. You send them a video, you send them a quick text, you send them, you give them a quick call. Just like, just want to check in on you and your life. Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up calling somebody who truthfully needed that phone call. And you're going to end up building a really deep relationship with that person. And I assure you, because it's happened dozens, if not hundreds of times in my career, where they're going to end up referring you somebody, they get onto your professional partners list. And now three to five years later, that person has referred to you dozens of transactions. But the only reason why that happened was because you called them and connected and built a relationship in the first place. Professional partners, sphere of influence, and I'm a huge fan of cold calling. I love cold calling. I absolutely love it. I built my business off of it. And I want you to know that anybody in the world can do that too. You can have zero contacts in your phone book and you can buy Mojo Dialer. Go to mojosales.com. I've been using Mojo for years. I do not work for them. I don't, make, I don't make any money when you sign up. I'm just saying I've used them for years. Use them. Mojo Dialer, mojosales.com. You check them out and you buy the circle prospect, the neighborhood search function. You literally can prospect any neighborhood, anytime, any amount of leads that you want forever. 
and it's not that expensive. I have the triple line dialer, plus every other, you know, I pay for everything, all the extra data. But I, I want you to know that, like, again, I'm paying probably like, what, $150 to $200 a month for Mojo? I mean, $200 a month to have endless leads. Endless leads? Are you serious? Geo prospecting, which, you know, people call it geo leads, or, you know, people call it circle prospecting, neighborhood search, whatever you want to call it. But I'm a huge fan of this because what happens is I get the, I have a buyer first, which I do this a lot for investing. I have a buyer first or an investor, right? Either way. And then they say, hey, Henry, I'm looking to buy a home in X town for X price range. And ideally I'm looking in this neighborhood. Fantastic. Guess what? Then I will have my team prospect that area. And then we will just call around until we find a house that would be a perfect fit for them. Wow magic. And what happens is that I do this all the time now in the commercial investment world and I make a ton of money doing it. I already have the buyers. They tell me what they're looking for and I prospect in that area for that price range and boom, all of a sudden money rains from the sky. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. I am cold calling a couple times a week. That's it. A couple times a week. I'm not calling cold calling every single day. I don't need to. If you don't have any business and you're doing less than two transactions a month, then I suggest you probably cold call more and or build a bigger network and or add more people to your network. This is not overly complicated. All three of those pillars should be able to drive enough business to you, their, your bottom line, quote unquote, your lead bottom line, where your pipeline is so big that you can end up doing three, five, 10 transactions a month. And then yes, will we talk about hiring agents at that time? Yes, of course. But the only other thing that I recommend that you do, that you can scale your business and make more money longer term, where I can have a three transaction closing month in my business of the, the commercial world and make $600,000. Close three deals and make 600 grand. I could close 60 transactions on the residential side and not make $600,000 because of the price points in my in my area. So I just want to understand it depends on what you're focusing on. This is why I've made specific shifts in my business. But again, if you're only closing two transactions a month, you better not be prospecting mobile homes. And not, that's not a joke, I'm being serious. Because if you're prospecting and cold calling an area for $50,000 to $100,000 mobile homes, it's probably not going to be the highest and best use of your time. I probably would recommend cold calling in neighborhoods where your average commission check is ten dollars to $20,000 at a minimum. And guess what? You know why most real estate agents don't prospect higher luxury listings? is because they truthfully don't feel like they're qualified to do so. Do you feel the same way? Guess what? So did I. But then I realized that the people who are selling those luxury listings started out never selling a luxury listing and then they got one and then they did one and then guess what? They probably did another one and they got a referral and they did another one and now they got two and then six and then 12 and 30 and all of a sudden they're the agent in that marketplace, which you can be too. It all starts with one. I think it's like 89% of people list with the first agent they end up meeting with or 70 or 80%, something ridiculous. If you're just the first agent in the door, you already have probably a 70 plus percent chance of getting the listing. Just get in the door. I promise it'll be worth your time. What's I've been to point number four? You're probably not following up as much as you should. I see most agents not following up at all. A lot of agents call me for coaching and most agents that I talk to, I'm like, so what's your follow-up systems? And they're like, well, I don't really have one. I'm like, okay, well then what's the point of prospecting in the first place if you're not then going to end up following up with that person? Because then it was all for nothing. Only 2% of transactions, 2% of all sales is done on the very first phone call. Only 2%. 80 plus percent is done between the fifth and the 12th contact. So if you're not following up at least five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 times, you're probably not gonna be closing the amount of deals you think you should. I had a coaching call today with my uh, my coaching students and we were diving into, if you just got two decent leads a day, call even one decent lead a day, Monday through Friday, that means it's 20 leads a month, 20 good, even if they were cold leads and they're not looking to do something for 90 days, okay? But if they're truthfully an actual lead, one lead a day, 20 leads a month, you should probably would be converting that 20 leads a month after the next 90, after a 90 day span of starting to build that up and following up with them consistently. Guys, in 90 days, you're gonna have 60 good leads that probably are looking to do something. If not that moment, very, very soon, if you're continuously following up with them. That means you should probably starting to convert that entire list of 60 at a three to 5% churn. 3% of 60 is what? Yeah, it's like three deals almost. You need to be paying attention to the fact that there is so much money to be made. Again, you should be closing three deals a month on a 60 person database, right? Especially if you're adding 20, 20 per month to it. That's just cold calling. That doesn't include referrals. If you're getting a referral lead, the conversion ratio is a lot higher. If you got cold leads, you're talking about like, you know, like two, three, four, five percent especially if they're good leads and you're pay, really paying attention and following up with them, you need to build out a follow-up system. What do you do to follow up right now? Write it on a piece of paper. Now I want you to ask yourself these questions. Number one, are you utilizing text messages and or auto texts? If they've already been someone you're in communication with, that you can put them on an auto text campaign, which is an automatic 
text follow-up system. I use a software called Brivity, B-R-I-V-I-T-Y. You can go to Brivity.com. That's a CRM that I've been using for years. And no, I do not get paid. I'm not an affiliate. Just use the freaking system for free. I don't care. Point is that I use this system because I I've loved their auto text campaigns. You put them on an auto text campaign and guess what? You can customize them and say whatever you want, just like if you were going to follow up with them in a normal fashion. So it, it actually looks like it's you following up with them. I have everybody on a 12 month auto text campaign and obviously hotter leads get on, you know, go faster. And then the longer term leads, they're a little bit more spread out. The point is that like there's auto text campaigns that every single lead is on. That's number one. Are you utilizing number two is auto email campaigns and they get the same type of message that you send via text via email. Okay, so now you have auto text and now you have auto emails. You also can do a weekly or monthly newsletter, which can be a really easy thing you can do via email. Okay, that doesn't have to be automatic. All right, you can also send video text messages. How often do you send a video text message? Guys, I use video text messages for my hottest leads just about every single month, anytime there's a holiday. July 4th, Valentine's Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Halloween, Christmas, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, New Year's, I don't know, whatever holidays I'm missing, throw them in there. Okay, point is that you guys can do video text messages for all of your leads. It's a fantastic follow-up plan. I do that at least once a month for all of my hottest leads. And the best part about it is that people really appreciate it because they don't actually ever get video messages and they get to actually see your face. And people really appreciate that. It can allow you to have a higher conversion rate because people will actually see that you are a human being and that you truly take this seriously. And the other part of your follow-up systems can be phone calls, okay? How often are you calling that lead? And my rule of thumb is that whatever they say to you, so like, hey, you don't call me back in three months, call them back in a month and a half. They say, hey, call me back in a month, call them back in two weeks. Cut it in half. Whatever they say to you, cut it in half and call them back just to confirm. That's the way to do it. It's Cut in half and confirm, the CC rule. And the whole point of the confirm part of it is just like, hey, John at Tenery, just wanted to follow up with you. Hope you and the family are doing fantastic. Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Yeah, John, listen, the reason why I was following up with you is like, I know that last time we spoke, you said you were looking to sell your home in three months. I know it's only been about a month and a half or so, but I just wanted to call and confirm to see if that was still part of the game plan for 2022. And then you shut up and you listen. Exactly. And guess what? He'll go on and he'll go on until he says, listen, sometimes things change or sometimes like it's for the good, you know, better part for us being realtors. And they're like, oh, actually, no, we're actually looking to put the house in the market lot sooner than we thought. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I'm glad we connected. Or they're going to say like, no, actually things have changed. Um, and, uh, we're actually not looking to list our home for another six months. No problem. I'll give you a call back in a couple months. Just to confirm we're still on track. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. It's super simple. And guess what? They'll say six months and then you'll call back at three and then you'll do the exact same script every single time. Guys, like don't overcomplicate this. I do this for every single lead every single time. And that's the only reason why I'll continuously close as many deals as I do because our follow-up systems are so tight and so consistent with every single lead we have. The follow-up system is where you're probably losing a ton of leads if every other aspect of this is on point and you're getting a ton of leads, except your follow-up systems might not be tight. Let's tweak those. Let's tighten that system a little bit. And I assure you, you start closing a few more deals. All right, guys, let's talk about point number five. Last but not least, it is most realtors do not hire a coach until they're making enough money to do so. So let me talk about a quick story. In my real estate career, about 11 months into it, I made my first, call it bigger commission checks. I closed two deals in my 10th and 11th month in the real estate business or 11th and 12th month. And it came to about 25,000 bucks. Okay, quick round numbers. And uh, I hadn't made a commission check the entire full year before that. And what I committed to was the second I got my commission check, what do you think I did with it? You're right, I bought a Ferrari. No, what I did was I invested in myself. I invested in coaching. Right, I bought a coach, I hired a coach because I knew that making $25,000 one time was not enough. I wanted to know how I could do this consistently for the rest of my life. Because if I can do it one time, I can know I can do it again and again, but I need the accountability and the guidance from somebody who's already been doing it to help me, to support me in being very consistent with this. Because listen, it's okay to not be perfect at something. All professional athletes have a coach. All high performing business owners have a coach because they need the accountability. I'm not saying you're not competent in doing it. I am competent in doing any type of action as well. However, having a coach allows me to be very nimble and see around corners that I may not see because I have the guidance of people who are very, very, very successful, more successful than me, so that they can help me make certain decisions decisions that I normally wouldn't know how to make them. And by the way, yeah, I could make a decision and I could try to do it. And guess what? I have seen, and I've also been the person to just screw up and learn through failures, learn by mistakes, which by the way is okay. And I understand why you'd want to do that. However, instead of learning through mistakes and that taking 10 years to build a seven figure real estate business or even a six figure real estate business, why not just pay five, 10, $20,000 for a coach 
who can help you get there in two or three years. Because I went from $137,000 to a seven-figure real estate business in 36 months because I hired a really, really good coach who was more successful than me, knew things that I didn't know. Basically, it was like a shortcut. Because what if I told you that here, here's where you are and here's where you want to go? And what ends up happening is that you do all this craziness and you go all around and you're doing all these crazy things and you eventually end up here. But what if I told you that you could have just went like this and you would have gotten there? And that's why I was able to do that in 36 months instead of the crazy failure learning experience to all of a sudden end up here in 10 years, right? And then over the next three years, all of you are going to watch me build a multi eight figure business in the real estate world. I'm just going to keep shortcutting life, shortcutting business because I'm listening to people who are incredibly successful instead of learning my mistakes and going all in these crazy directions. I'd rather just pay for the shortcut. I'm shortcutting time. I'm saving myself time. Listen, I know you can be successful on your own, but why waste the time? Even if it could save you one extra, if you could do it one year faster, why not pay the money, right? Because that's exactly what you pay for, speed and accountability. That's really what coaching is. So the best investment that you could ever make when it comes to getting your first commission check or just in general in the real estate business is not Facebook ads, it's investing in yourself and hiring a coach because the dividends is a thousand fold. The coaching that I've paid for has been about 15X on my money because I've spent about $300,000 on coaching and I've made nearly four, four and a half million dollars in real estate business in the last three years. Over the next three years, I'll probably make 20 to 30 million, right? Because based on right now, I mean, we're having you know, somewhere between three and $400,000 a month on average right now. And I know that's about the scale. You know, I know in the next 12 months, we'll probably hit our first seven figure month and then we'll, we'll continue to scale from there. So if you want to kickstart, if you want to jump, you know, and, and basically skip steps in the real estate business and skip to that six figure year, your first six figure year or your bigger six figure year or your seven figure year, if you really want to be able to jump from where you are to that point, hire a coach. And again, if you want me to be your coach, you can click the link down below uh, in the description and listen, I'm not saying that this is for everybody. I only want to work with the most committed people in the world. Because if you're not committed, then no one's going to be able to help you anyways. I've been able to help people earn their first six figures, uh, next six figures in their business within their first six months of coaching with me. And I want to be able to help you do the same. So again, you can click the link down in the description below. And the last thing I'll say to you is this. If you do nothing, nothing will change. And then next year, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after, you're going to continue to sell the same amount of real estate. However, I've seen people where if they made one or two or three slight shifts in your business, two millimeter shifts, slight tweaks in their business, they all of a sudden go from two transactions a month to 20 transactions a month, similar to what I've done. And it's not going to be that complicated. A few two millimeter shifts, hiring the right coach and can being consistent with your efforts. I assure you, you'll see more success than just about any other type of change that you can possibly make. I hope this video helped you. And I'm so excited to see what you guys create over the next couple months. I love you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.